Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. Now, today, we have now entered day 80 of the ongoing war between the Russian Federation and Ukraine, and uh, obviously, uh, the fighting uh, continues. Uh, at this stage, as we go into day 80 and as we continue to observe uh, this uh, Ukrainian counterattack that is uh, taking place uh, near Kharkov, uh, we continue to see uh, Russian forces uh, being uh, pushed back uh, towards its, uh, its shared border with uh, Ukraine and Russia. And at the same time, uh, we are starting to see uh, some Russian operations uh, continue uh, to run into um, rather uh, significant difficulties to the west of uh, Severodonetsk. You have this continued uh, counterattack by Ukrainian forces in the north. Uh, at the same time, uh, we have seen elements of Russian units being uh, moved uh, towards Kharkov uh, to defend against that uh, ongoing Ukrainian offensive. And at the same time, uh, some of the uh, the uh, Russian uh, maneuver uh, operations uh, west of several Donetsk, such as uh, the reported uh, failed uh, river crossing uh, that occurred uh, within the last uh, 48 hours, uh, is really kind to continue to hamper uh, Russian uh, ongoing operations. Uh, in terms of uh, other areas, we continue to see the Russians uh, att attempt uh, to reduce, degrade, and uh, defeat uh, Ukrainian forces at the uh, metallurgical plant. Now, uh, as, we, as we look deeper and obtain more and more information uh, about uh, just what the uh, Russians are facing, uh, the, uh, the complex that the uh, Ukrainians are defending... Uh, is is incredibly uh, large. Uh, it was designed and built, purpose built, to withstand uh, possibly direct uh, nuclear attack. Uh, it it has uh, uh, six levels reportedly uh, underground under the uh, the metallurgical facility with uh, vast networks of tunnels uh, that connect. Uh, all these facilities, and there's anywhere from several hundred to upwards to uh, to 2,000 uh, Ukrainian forces still defending this site. And uh, given the nature that of the the bunker complex, it is a an incredibly tough nut for the Russians uh, to to crack. And outside the the use of uh, pro prolonged uh, siege methods and or the use of pumping chemical weapons directly into the site uh, would be it's going to be very very difficult uh, for the uh, Russians uh, to take control of of said area. Now, with that being said, obviously, uh, as as the Ukrainians run out of food and supplies, uh, they would be more prone uh, to surrender. But a direct assault uh, on the facility. Uh, with, uh, in, in all likelihood, with infantry uh, clearing out these tunnels and bunker complexes uh, would be incredibly costly and very time-consuming, and it's probably uh, the safer option for the Russians uh, just to, uh, to starve out those forces as opposed for a, uh, a direct assault. Uh, in other areas, we're not seeing a lot of... Uh, a lot of movement, uh, both sides, especially near uh, Kherson and other areas in the south, southwest, uh, ha have become more or less uh, static with uh, Russian forces continuing to launch uh, long-range rocket and artillery strikes, and as do uh, the Ukrainian forces uh, as, as well. Uh, but uh, right now, I would have to say that uh, where this operation stands uh, in terms of the uh, Russians gaining additional progress, uh, this operation could be uh, very much in jeopardy for Russian forces. Uh, I, I talked about that uh, uh, over the course of the last few weeks, that uh, for the Russians to regain momentum and uh, continue to start having successful operations uh, in the uh, the Donbass area of operations, uh, we would have to see the uh, Russians encircle and eventually seize control of, of, of crucial towns such as Slav uh, Slovyansk, uh, Kramatorsk, and, uh, and Severodonetsk. Now, the Russians may 
uh, finally achieved some sort of breakthrough, uh, uh, mainly near uh, uh, Papasnaya, and then eventually forced the Ukrainians to uh, withdraw to their next line of, of defenses just to the uh, uh, west of the, uh, of the uh, Donetsk River. And uh, that, that is possible, uh, but at the same time, continuing this ongoing offensive by the Russians, especially with the Ukrainian offensive uh, further to the north, and uh, and again that uh, uh, that that mission by the Russians to encircle and seize control of uh, of Kramatorsk and Slovyansk uh, is going to uh, steadily uh, continue uh, to prove more and more difficult. Uh, compounding this issue is the continued direct support uh, by uh, the uh, the NATO allies by providing uh, the Ukrainian military with a, a vast array of, uh, of military assistance. The, the, the number one and most important form of assistance uh, comes in the form, obviously, of real-time and active intelligence. I've talked about this numerous times and just how important it is for the Ukrainians. And uh, it, it, the, the Ukrainians continue to receive this information, which is really helping them uh, in this uh, ongoing campaign. Uh, furthermore, we have seen weapon systems that are being deployed to the Ukraine that have not really been talked about and have not been officially announced as being deployed. Obviously, we have the M777 uh, 155mm howitzer and the Excalibur laser-guided uh, system along with that that is being deployed, but we also believe systems such as the uh, Brimstone, the ground launch uh, Brimstone, that's, that is an extended range uh, anti-tank guided weapon system. It can also be used obviously against bunkers and armored fighting vehicles and, and what have you, and, and that system uh, that was created by the uh, British is, is, has been deployed against the Russians. Uh, we also believe that uh, in limited quality and limited Quantities, the uh, the Israeli spike non-line of sight system uh, could soon be deployed if it has not already been deployed in a uh, clandestine manner or a covert uh, manner. But there are a host of systems probably uh, currently uh, being deployed on the battlefield that have not been officially announced because of the, the sensitivity of some of those systems, such as the, uh, the, the, the Slam Ram. It's a, a ground launch uh, version of the U.S. Uh, AMRAAM uh, missile. And uh, that could also be uh, being currently used in the, uh, in the ongoing conflict, which is, in some cases is keeping uh, Russian aircraft uh, from uh, flying over certain areas. And obviously, the Ukrainians do possess uh, book and, and S-300 systems uh, as well, which is, is, it does make it difficult for the uh, Russians to continue uh, air dominance and, uh, and, and have, have yet gained uh, what you would, you would call air supremacy, especially over uh, western Ukraine. Obviously, the Russians continue to launch cruise missile strikes, but uh, having uh, lo loitering uh, SU-34s or SU-24s and uh, SU-25s uh, continuing to operate uh, over western Ukraine is just something that is very, very difficult for the uh, Russians uh, to do at, at this point. And especially uh, in terms of the ability of the Russians to operate uh, interdiction missions of Russian, or, I'm sorry, Ukrainian maneuver units, especially that are crossing uh, the, uh, the Dnieper River to the west. Uh, the, the Ukrainians are, are continuing to maneuver, uh, fortify, strengthen, and move forces around Ukraine uh, uh, without uh, a great deal of, uh, of actual Russian interdiction. The Russians can hit fixed targets and some moving targets, but uh, long-term uh, tactical fixed-wing aircraft uh, constantly uh, interdicting uh, Ukrainian uh, maneuvering units units that are, are moving from west to east uh, is proving difficult for the Russians in this campaign. And uh, it's, it's right now, is, it's really what's keeping the, the Ukrainians in this fight. And as we talked about before, there's, there's also things going on that really kind of uh, make me scratch my head in terms of targets that have not yet been hit uh, inside of Kiev and, uh, and in other areas. 
and uh, the the purpose b behind that is is really unknown at this point, and uh, and maybe some sort of backdoor agreement in terms of hitting the uh, Ukrainian Ministry of Defense would uh, would would stave off a Ukrainian attack, maybe a long range cruise missile attack uh, in the direction of Moscow. Uh, we do know that the Ukrainians could possess such capability uh, or at least uh, hitting uh, uh, towns uh, deeper than areas such as Bryansk uh, and Kursk uh, and, uh, and Belgorod. Uh, the, the Ukrainians definitely possess that capability now, whether they are holding off on striking some more deeper Russian cities um, in, in hopes that the Russians don't hit some of the more crucial targets uh, in and around Kiev, who knows? But uh, we we do know that there has been targets that uh, would would seem like they would be pretty high on the uh, the Kremlin's hit list that have not been struck. Uh, obviously, uh, the, uh, the the Russians would have had the ability. Uh, to uh, to take down some communications ability, especially in terms of uh, of, of, of Zelensky's nightly <laughs> address to the nation, the the Russians would have the ability to take that down and have not yet uh, done so for uh, for whatever reason. But uh, that's kind of the status quo right now. Uh, I I would say at at this point. Uh, the uh, the Russian operation, quite frankly, uh, is in, in jeopardy. Now I understand that uh, over a period of time, attrition and uh, the uh, the continued use of uh, of air power and the pressure that is being put on the Ukrainian military uh, could change the uh, the scope of the uh, the battlefield. But uh, as we stand right now, the Russians are finding it very very difficult uh, to uh, proceed uh, with its encirclement of Ukrainian forces in the uh, the Donbass and the Ukrainians continue to strengthen fortify it's uh, what what we see right now are is a is a triple uh, layer of uh, defensive lines that continue uh, to operate Ukrainian forces continue to maneuver and uh, and, and really uh, continue to become a thorn in the uh, the Russian campaign especially what is happening uh, near Kharkov, uh, as we speak, to the uh, to the north of uh, of operations in the kind of the southern Donbass area of operations. But that's what we have for today. We'll continue to monitor, report, and bring you uh, information as we get it. Have a good day, everybody.